Susan Morphew, a Colorado mother of two, she vanished on Mother's Day in May of 2020. You may have been familiar with the story. At first, it was thought that she was abducted after heading out on her mountain bike. Authorities also had her husband, Barry, in their sights, though. But there were a lot more bizarre clues and twists and turns in this story than anyone could have anticipated. So 48 Hours correspondent Peter Van Sand has that story. The Suzanne Morphew murder case presented investigators with a puzzle. How to decipher a mountain of evidence that included a chipmunk alibi, a tranquilizer gun, and a pen right out of a James Bond film. They find a spy pen. It looks something like this, and they find it in the master bedroom of the Morphew home. Ashley Franco has covered this case for KKTV. It looks like a normal pen, it writes, but it can record any type of audio as long as it hears sound. The pen captured Suzanne talking to a secret lover. Her husband, Barry, apparently was unaware. Investigators believe Barry killed Suzanne because she had told Barry she was done with their marriage. The prosecution's case is that Barry snapped at one point, the day before Mother's Day. Prosecutors assume Suzanne, a mother of two, is dead. Her body has not been found. On that Mother's Day weekend in 2020, investigators noticed Barry's cell phone appeared to be pinging all around his house. Barry Morphew told investigators, I was running around the house looking for chipmunks to shoot. A chipmunk alibi? Prosecutors didn't buy it. They had found a clear plastic cap in the family dryer that they say links Barry to a tranquilizer rifle, even though Suzanne's DNA was on the cap, not Barry's. Animal care expert Andrew Caters showed us a typical tranquilizer gun. This dark cap appears similar to the plastic cap agents described finding in Barry's home. Could you now demonstrate for me? Sure. For a human being, it could be lethal. For sure. Prosecutors say that Barry Morphew, an experienced deer hunter, had used a tranquilizer gun to hunt and control Suzanne like he had hunted and controlled animals. He was arrested for Suzanne's murder and pleaded not guilty. So Peter Van Sant is unable to join us today, but reporter Ashley Franco from our Colorado Springs affiliate, KKTV, is with us. Boy, I mean, that end there just sort of gave me the creeps hunting uh, his wife, allegedly. That's what the prosecutors assert. Uh, Ashley, I understand that there are some surprising DNA. There was some surprising DNA that was found in her car, and it may upend the prosecution's case against her husband, Barry. What can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So investigators went in and swabbed and found DNA in Suzanne's Range Rover on the glove compartment. And when they went and ran that through CODIS, they found that that partial DNA matched an unknown male connected to three different sexual assault cases in three different cities. Now, prosecutors know apparently that there is a suspect connected to at least one of those cases. We don't know much about it, but we know that this could create some problems for the prosecution's case. So Barry claims to have shot at chipmunks on the day Su uh, Suzanne, his wife, was, was thought to have vanished, rather. Prosecutors believe that he shot her with a tranquilizer gun. What sort of evidence do they have about the level of experience Barry had as a hunter? Well, Barry had told uh, investigators several times that he is an avid hunter, and there's a, a, all of that evidence right coming from him, actually. And he admitted that he used to load tranquilizer darts with chemicals to paralyze and shoot deer. So deer would roam around their property often, and he said that he would load the tranquilizer dart and he would shoot them because their antlers were valuable. He would end up tranquilizing them, putting them to sleep, and then cutting their antlers off. And we'll actually see a picture from his garage confirming this evidence. There's a pile of deer antlers just in the corner sitting there. Wow. Um, tell me about the spy pen. It captured proof that she was having an affair? 
Absolutely. So at first, investigators say that Suzanne originally bought this pen because she believed Barry was actually having an affair. And there's no evidence of him having an affair. But when investigators found this pen, they went ahead, plugged it into a computer, and they actually pulled records and found that there was an intimate, intimate conversation with some sort of person Suzanne may have been in love with. And he was eventually tracked down in a different state. And he did admit that he had an affair with Suzanne, but he had an alibi for the day that she went missing. So while there's no evidence that Barry actually knew about this affair, prosecutors say they believe part of his motive for killing her could be that their their relationship was troubled and she had actually asked for a divorce days before missing. And that's according to some of her friends and family. God, it is amazing the twists and turns that you find when you just sort of scratch below the surface when it comes to these cases. Ashley Franco, thank you so much. You can watch the Suzanne Morphew case, Nothing is What It Seems, on 48 Hours tomorrow night at 10, 9 central on CBS. You can also stream it on our streaming service, Paramount+. Plus.